So, good evening, ma'am. Good evening, classmates. I'm Shanin Angelic P. Morales, and my report is about the types of forecasting methods. So, to start, let us first know our learning objectives. First, to identify the types of forecasting methods and their advantages and disadvantages, and to provide examples in each of the forecasting methods. Forecasting methods can be classified into two groups, the qualitative method and the quantitative method. Qualitative forecasting methods are often called judgmental methods are methods in which the forecast is made subjectively by the forecaster. So they are educated guesses by forecasters or experts based on intuition, knowledge, and experience. On the other hand, quantitative methods are based on mathematical modeling. Because they are mathematical, these methods are consistent. The same model will generate the exact same forecast from the set, same set of data every time. These methods are also objective. So to compare the two methods, I have provided here a table which shows these two categories and their characteristics. Both the qualitative and the quantitative forecasting methods have strengths and weaknesses. And because qualitative methods are based on human judgment, opinions, they are subjective and non-mathematical. And they can be often biased. These biases can be related to personal motivation, such as, Oh, they are going to set my budget based on my forecast, so I'd better predict high. Mood. Oh, I feel lucky today. And our conviction. That picture can strike anybody out. But, but they also have the advantage of being able to incorporate last-minute inside information, such as an advertising campaign by a competitor, a snowstorm, delaying a shipment, or a heat wave increasing sales of ice cream. Then let's go to quantitative methods. Quantitative methods, on the other hand, are consistent and objective, meaning they do not suffer from the biases found in qualitative forecasting. Although quantitative methods are objective and consistent, they require data in quantifiable form in order to generate a forecast. Often, we do not have such data. For example, if we are making a strategic forecast or if we are forecasting sales of a new product. Also, quantitative methods are only as good as the data on which they are based. Quantitative and qualitative method has its place, and a good forecaster learns to rely on both. There are many types of qualitative forecasting methods. Some are informal and some are structured. Regardless of how structured the process is, we should remember that these models are based on subjective opinion and are not mathematical in nature. Some common qualitative methods are shown and are described in this table. First, we have the executive opinion. It is a forecasting method in which a group of managers meet and collectively develop a forecast. This method is often used for strategic forecasting or forecasting the success of a new product or service. Sometimes, it can be used to change an existing forecast. Although managers can bring good insights to the forecast, this method has a number of disadvantages. Often, the opinion of one person can dominate the forecast if that person has more power than the other members of the group or is very domineering. Think about the times when you were part of a group for a course or for your job. There will be chances that you experience situations in which one person's views dominated. Next is the market research. It is an approach to forecasting that relies on surveys and interviews to determine 
customer preferences, likes, dislikes, and to identify new product ideas. Usually, the company hires an outside marketing firm to conduct a market research study. There is a good chance that you were a participant in such a study if someone called you and asked about your product preferences. The market research can be a good determinant of customer preferences. However, it has also a number of shortcomings. One of the most common has to do with how the survey questions are designed. For example, a market research firm may call and ask you to identify which of the following is your favorite hobby. Gardening, working on cars, cooking, or playing sports. But maybe none of this is your favorite because you prefer playing the piano or fishing and these options are not included. This question is poorly designed because it forces you to pick a category that you really don't fit in, which can lead to misinterpretation of the survey results. The next one is the Delphi method. It is an approach to forecasting in which a forecast is the product of a consensus among a group of experts. The researcher puts together a panel of experts in the chosen field. These experts do not have to be in the same facility or even in the same country. They do not know who the other panelists are. The process involves sending questionnaires to the panelists, then summarizing the findings and sending them an updated questionnaire incorporating the findings. The researcher's job is to identify what the experts agree on and use that as the forecast. This process continues until a consensus is reached. This method has the advantage of not allowing anyone to dominate the consensus and it has been shown to work very well. Although it is very time-consuming to develop, it has been shown to be an excellent method for forecasting long range of product demand, technological change, and scientific advances in medicine. For example, if you wish to predict the timing for an AIDS vaccine or a cure for cancer, you would probably use this technique. Since we are finished discussing the types of qualitative forecasting methods, let's go to the types of quantitative forecasting methods. This can be also divided into two categories such as time series and associative models. Time series look at past patterns of data and attempt to predict the future based upon the underlying patterns contained within those data. So it assumes that all the information needed to generate a forecast is contained in the time series of data. A time series is a series of observations taken at regular intervals over a specific period of time. So for example, if you were forecasting quarterly corporate sales and had collected 5 years of quarterly sales data, you would have a time series. The time series analysis assumes that we can generate a forecast based on the patterns in the data. So as a fo forecaster, you would look for patterns such as trend, seasonality, and cycle and use that information to generate a forecast. On the other hand, associative models, often called causal models, assume that the variable is being forecasted is related to other variables in the environment. They try to project based upon those associations. The forecaster's job is to discover how these variables are related in mathematical terms and use that information to forecast the future. For example, we might decide that sales are related to advertising dollars and GNP. From historical data, we will build a model that explains the relationship of these variables and use it to forecast corporate sales. When determining the quantitative approach to take, there's a lot of approach and I'll, I'll only go over to at least three. The naive approach, moving averages, and linear regression. So to explain further, the naive approach assumes that the demand in next period is the same as the demand in most recent period. 
So, it is pretty much when it says that it is naive. So, for example, if the January sales are 68, then I would say that the February sales were 68. So, it's picking the last three period demands and just saying that this is what we're going to have. The naive approach is very simple and easy to use kasi nga, nangangopya lang siya. It uses last period's actual value as a forecast. Next, still under time series, the moving average method. Moving average is a series of arithmetic means. Moving average method is a forecasting method in which only n of the most recent observations are average. Or in other words, it takes a period of time and you define what that period of time is or what this n is down here. So this can be anything you want. It can be a 3-month moving average. It could be a 6-month, whatever you want to do. But you pick a period of time and then you're going to average out for those previous periods. So I'll show you here an example. If these are actual sales in this column here and I want to get the three month moving average for April. So I'm going to take the three previous months, the March, February, and January, and then just average those. And so that it will give me a section or a forecast of 11 and two thirds for April. So now, when I move to May and so on, you're just going to be doing exactly the same thing. One month passes, then I have a new three-month moving average. So here I started in April. I was forecasting for April, and so I took into consideration actuals for January, February, and March. So if I want now to forecast for May, then I will take the actuals for April, March, and February. So all you do is you're only using three months worth of data. If I do a 3-month mo moving average, and so that the older data just kind of falls off, and you're building more current. Lastly, under associative model, and the most common method for this is just linear regression. It is used when changes in one or more independent variables can be used to predict the changes in the dependent variable. So what we are trying to do, is again forecast or predict y and that's your independent variable and it's based on some inputs that could, you'd have meaning with those independent variables. So maybe I'm trying to forecast sales and so I have different variables. I have the month as a variable, the store location might be a variable, the department might be a variable and I could have all sorts of different variables and ultimately it's going to tell me what this y or in other words, that the demand or forecast should be. So let's have an example here. So this is an example I got from the internet. They have a formula set up like this after the regression showed, showed this to be true based on historical data. They plug in numbers and it told them this regression equation. Well then, if the payroll next year is estimated to be 6 billion, then they would expect that the sales would be expected to be $3,250,000. For our conclusion, forecast is becoming the sign of survival and the language of business. All requirements of the business sector need the technique of accurate and practical reading into the future. Forecasts are therefore very essential requirement for the survival of business. And that is the end of my report. Thank you.